Okay, hi everyone. Uh, now I think we're going to take on uh, maybe the most serious piece of mathematics we've actually looked at in this course. Uh, it's a um, part of the fundamental theorems of, of number theory, and it goes back to Euclid, the same Euclid who was interested in geometry and wrote the, the book on geometry called Euclid's Elements. And in, in fact, he treated some number theory topics in that book we already saw one of his proofs, the proof that there are infinitely many prime numbers. Now we're going to look at a slightly different proof uh, involving the greatest common divisor of two numbers. So uh, the theorem that we're going to be studying uh, is Proposition 7.1 in our textbook. And um, it says the following. If A and B are natural numbers, then there exist integers K and L for which the GCD of A and B, the greatest common divisor of A and B, is equal to AK plus BL. So this is in this section because it's an existence theorem. And as is often the case with an existence theorem, it's about an equation. And it says that you can always solve the equation GCD of AB equals AK plus BL for integers K and L. Um, so just to drive home the, uh, the structure of it, let's look at the logic here. The logic says for all A and B and N, so there's a universal quantifier there, there exist K and L in Z so that GCD of AB is AK plus BL. So our task is we're given A and B, so we pres presumably know the GCD of A and B, and then we have to find K and L. And the K and L that we find are going to depend on A and B, and they have to be integers. That's the, the catch. You know, fair using fractions or real numbers or anything. Otherwise, it'd be too easy. So as is often the case, uh, there's a lot of unspoken work that's done before this theorem is stated. Let, let's do a few experiments and just see if we can find out if we believe this at all. Um, we've actually seen some examples of this. For instance, let's look at the case where A is 7 and B is 3. It's a pretty easy case. So these two numbers have no factors in common, so their greatest common divisor is 1. And the theorem says we should be able to solve the equation 7k plus 3l equals 1. And without a lot of science, I think you can see that we do have a solution. We can take k equals 1 and l equals minus 2. Uh, let's take another example. Suppose we take a equals mm, 17 and b equals 5. Well, now maybe it's not completely obvious what the right solution is, um, but we could try to maybe um, experiment a little bit. So if we take, uh, well, 17 minus 5, that's not enough. We could take 17 minus 3 times 5. That's only going to give me 2. Another way to think of it is, can I get 17 to be close to a multiple of 5? And, and that does give you an idea. If you take 17 times 2, uh, that's 34. And if you take make that negative and you add 7 times 5, you get 35 minus 34. So that's 1. So in this case, k is minus 2 and l is 7. But as you can see, that wasn't very scientific. And um, it's not really clear how you would turn that into a system to prove that a, a solution exists for arbitrary a and b. Maybe we should look at a pair where the GCD is not um, 1. So suppose we were to look at, um, I don't know, how about, how about 15 and 9. So then the GCD is 3. And um, well, sure enough, 3 is equal to 2 times 15 plus 9 times minus 3, right? That's 30 minus 27. So again, there's a solution. OK, there's hope. Um, how, um, how, how do you even think about this, this problem? Well, for that, let, let's take a slightly different approach. And, and let's go back to this, um, maybe to our first example of 7 and 3. And let's. Instead of focusing our attention here on the left-hand side and asking, can we get the GCD, let's sort of ask a different question. Let's ask, which numbers come up in the form 7k plus 3l? And for that, we can make a little grid. We can have kl minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 
minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. So if k and l are 0, then 7k plus 3l is 0. So this is a table of 7k plus 3l. And now if you increase l, you're adding 3s, right? So if we go to here, this is going to be 3, 6, minus 3, minus 6. And if you increase k, then you're adding 7 or subtracting 7. So this is minus 7 minus 14. This is 7 and this is 14. Here we have minus 3 plus 7 should be 4 and 11. Minus 6 plus 7, well, there's our 1. That's, that's the one we were looking for before. And then 8. And then down here we would have 10 and 17. And uh, here we'd have minus 4. And uh, here we'd have minus 1. And here we'd have minus 8. And here we'd have minus 11, and so on. So uh, one thing to notice, so we, we definitely have 1 here, and we have 3, and we have 4, and we have 7, and we have 8. What about some of the numbers that are missing, like 2 and 5? Well, one thing to notice is that since we have 1 here, 1 is equal to 7 times 1, plus 3 times minus 2. Well, 2, therefore, is equal to 7 times 2 plus 3 times minus 4. All I did was multiply this equation by 2. So the reason I'm not seeing 2 in this picture is because it's, it's out here somewhere. But it is in this picture. And in fact, this same trick is going to let me get 5. 5, for instance, is 7 times 5 plus 3 times minus 10 which is 35 minus 30. So in fact, because of the fact that we have one in this list, every number appears in this list. Because once we get one, we can get anything that we want. So in the case of 7k plus 3l, every, uh, every integer appears in this list. And if you think about it for a moment, in the 17.5 example, well, we were able to write 1 as 17 times minus 2 plus 7 times 5. So we can get any number. We could, we could get 2 as 17 times minus 4 plus 7 times 10, and so forth. So let's turn the question around. Remember, I said we were going to turn the question around. And instead of asking, which can we get the GCD, let's ask, what numbers can we get? And in the case of 7 and 3, it looks like we can get every number. And it seems like if we can get one, we can get every number. Let's just, just so we can maybe figure out what's going on, let's look at 15 and 9. So 15 and 9, let's make the same kind of chart, a KL chart. And minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. And again, in, here we have, so here we're looking at 15K plus 9L. So as we increase L, we're adding 9. So here's going to be 18, minus 9, minus 18. And when we increase K, we're adding 15. Uh, so when we increase K here, we're adding, we're going to get 6. Here we're going to get 15. And of course, as we're going down here, we're increasing by 9. So we're going to have 24. And here we're going to have um, 24 plus 9, which is... Uh, 18 plus 15 is 33. And if you look, we could keep going if you want. Uh, minus 3, minus 18, we're subtracting 15. So here's minus 33, minus 48. Uh, 6, minus 9, minus 24. And you could keep doing this. And I think the thing that I want to point out about all these numbers is that you're getting a lot of numbers here, but they are all divisible by 3, right? And actually, uh, where is the, the GCD we decided was 3? Where is our 3? Um, we decided that 3 was uh, 2 times 15, which is 30 minus 3 times 9. So actually, we don't. Um, K is 2. The, the next number here, remember, going from going this way, this is 12. If we could go up one more, we would see our 3. Our 3 is kind of up here. So, um, or we could just notice that if we have minus 3, then we, could, we have 3 just by changing the signs of k and l. But nevertheless, everything that we've got here is a multiple of 3. So 
And, and that shouldn't be surprising because if you look at 15K plus 9L, 15 is divisible by three and nine is divisible by three. So in fact, this is equal to three times 5K plus 3L. So whatever values you put in for K and L, you're gonna get a multiple of three. And it was from looking at examples like this that we eventually, back in the day, Euclid, came to a conjecture, which was that the, the possible values of AK plus BL are the multiples of the greatest common divisor. And that was the conjecture. And a slightly weaker version of that is that the smallest positive value of the form AK plus BL as K and L vary is the greatest common divisor of A and B. And if you think about it, that, that, that's a kind of a hopeful conjecture because what this argument says is when you look at AK plus BL, if, if, if you have a common divisor of A and B, then every combination AK plus BL is gonna be a multiple of that common divisor. So you're not gonna be able to get anything smaller than the greatest common divisor without going negative. And so the, um, the idea that came, that, that, that sort of is underlying this proof is the way I like to think of it is not so much that it's an, a, a theorem about trying to find the solution to this equation, GCD of AB equals AK plus BL, but more a statement about if you look at all the numbers that you can make in the form AK plus BL, the smallest positive one you can possibly achieve is the greatest common divisor of A and B. And that's how the proof works. The proof works by showing that if you take all combinations of AK plus BL and you look at the smallest positive one, it's the greatest common divisor. So now we can look at the proof more carefully, but before we do, there's a crucial um, observation that we're gonna use as part of the proof. And that is that this set of numbers, AX plus BY or AK plus BL, as I was calling them before, is closed under addition. Meaning that if you have two numbers in this set and you add or subtract them, they're still in the set. The proof of this is pretty easy. Suppose you have two numbers. So let's say um, T is AX0 plus BY0, and S is AX1 plus BY1, where X0 and Y0 and X1 and Y1 are all integers. So this is a way of saying that T is an arbitrary element of A and S is an arbitrary element of A. Add them, and you get A times x0 plus x1 plus B times y0 plus y1. And sure enough, T plus S is still in A because x0 plus x1 and y0 plus y1 are still integers. And all you've done is sort of add the coordinates. So if you go back to the grid, what this is saying is that if you take, say, this number here, which is in the grid, and this number here, which is in the grid, and you add them together, you can add their coordinates. So this one is at minus one, minus one. This one is at one, one. When you add them together, it's at zero, zero. Or if you take minus 33 plus minus nine, well, minus 33 is at minus two, minus one. Minus nine is at minus one, minus zero. So when you add them together, you add the coordinates, you would get minus three minus one for the sum, which is minus 42. So th this set of numbers A, which is the numbers that you get by taking all sort of combinations of multiples of A and multiples of B, is a collection of numbers which is closed under addition. If, if you add two such numbers together or subtract, there's nothing special about addition, I could have used subtraction here then I still get one of these numbers. And this turns out to be a key idea in the proof of the theorem that we're now gonna look at. So now we're gonna carefully go through the proof in the book 
And I encourage you to read the book's proof as well. And uh, as I said, or should have said, mastery of this proof is important. Um, if you take something away from this course, you should have learned this proof and understand all of its steps and all of the ingredients and how to apply it. So remember the proposition. It says that if we have two natural numbers, then we're going to show that there exist integers k and l for which this equation is a GCD of AB is AK plus BL. But we're not actually going to prove it in quite this form. Instead, what we're going to say is we're going to prove that the smallest positive number of this form is the GCD. And since the smallest positive number of this form is of this form, that'll give us our solution. So the way the proof goes is we begin by letting D be the smallest positive element of A. So now we have elements X and Y so that D is AX plus BY. There may be multiple elements. It may be possible to write D as AX plus BY in multiple ways. In fact, it is. If you think about it for a minute, if you change X by minus B and Y by A, you can add an AB to both terms that cancels out. But we don't care about that. We just need one set of values. So we're going to let K and L be one pair of integers for which the smallest element is AX plus BY. So remember, we don't know that D has anything to do with the greatest common divisor yet. All we know is it's the smallest positive element in the set A. And now the way the proof goes is we're going to show that it's the greatest common divisor. So to show that something is the greatest common divisor of two numbers, we have to show that it is a common divisor and it's bigger than every other common divisor. So let's start by showing that it is a common divisor of A and B. To do this, we need to use the division algorithm, which says that if you have two numbers, in this case, A and D, you can divide A by D, and you can get a quotient and a remainder. And the remainder is always bigger than or equal to 0 and less than D. So what, what you do here is this is, so Q is the number of Ds in A, and R is the remainder. And the remainder is always between 0 and D. Now, what can we say here? We know that the number A is in A because A is A times 1 plus B times 0, and a, big A consists of all combinations like that of A and B. And QD is in A because QD, I didn't prove my lemma. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> Sorry. A little bit of a brain freeze there, even on video. So QD is D plus D plus D plus D Q times. And therefore, QD is in A because A is closed under addition. And if you add an element of A, to itself d times, you still have an element of a. So a is in the set big A, and qd is in the set big A. So a minus qd, which is the difference of elements is in a big A, is in big A. So the remainder r is in big A. But r is less than d and bigger than or equal to 0, right? And d is the smallest positive element of a. So r is bigger than or equal to 0 and smaller than the smallest positive element of a. There's only one possibility that meets those two conditions. It has to be 0. If it were not, if it were bigger than 0, d wouldn't be the smallest positive element. r would be. But r is strictly less than d. So r has to be 0. In other words, a is a multiple of d. The remainder is 0. So we've shown by this argument that A is a multiple of D, and so D is a divisor of A. A is D times Q, where Q is some integer. And there was nothing special about A here. I could have done the same argument with B and again concluded that B was a multiple of D. So this first part of the proof shows that the smallest positive element of the form AK plus BL
is a divisor of both A and B. But it, that doesn't mean it's the greatest common divisor. It could be any common divisor. And now we have to prove that it's the greatest common divisor. So the way you prove something's the greatest common divisor is you take any common divisor, and we're going to prove that D is bigger than or equal to G. In other words, the way you prove something's the biggest is you show it's among all common divisors, it's bigger than or equal to any of them. And how do you do that? Well, it's a common divisor. This G is a common divisor. So we write A is a multiple of G and B is a multiple of G for two natural numbers, U and V. And you substitute those equations into the equation for D. So D is UGK plus VGL, which is G times UK plus VL. In other words, D is a multiple of G. G is a divisor of D. Well, the divisors of a number are smaller than that number. So D must be bigger than or equal to G. So we've shown that D is the greatest common divisor because it's bigger than or equal to all common divisors. OK, you got that? So each of these steps requires some thought. Two comments. The first comment is that we actually prove that every common divisor of A and B is a divisor of the greatest common divisor. Because you see what we did here? We, in, in this step two, all we said was we have a common divisor of A and B. And we showed, therefore, that that common divisor of A and B is a common divisor of D. You probably knew that. You probably knew from elementary school that if you take the GCD of two numbers, then all the common divisors divide the GCD. But in fact, that's not obviously true. And now we've proved it. So it's not just the case that the greatest common divisor is the biggest common divisor. All the other common divisors divide it. So in, in the case of um, 15 and 9, or how about this? Let's use uh, um, uh, 8 and 12. So the GCD of 8 and 12 is 4. And the only common divisors of 8 and 12 are 1, 2, and 4. And they're all divisors of 4. So that's one comment. And the other is that there's an algorithm for finding GCD of AB that solves this equation. And let me, um, in another video, I will explain how that algorithm works.